Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are going to be doing another miniature art doll. Last time we did a miniature was a dragon. It was my first miniature. It was a lot of fun. I learned a lot. I made it way too complex. So this time around I'm going to simplify it. Plus I thought it would be fun to try and do something life size that's that small as well as just a miniature. So I thought a hummingbird would be a perfect project to try this out on. Anyways, let's get started. Okay guys, so the first thing that I did was I sketched out a little design to try and figure out all the different pieces that we're going to need for our hummingbird. Now I've learned a lot since the last time we did a miniature piece, which was our little dragon, and the main thing I've learned was I can't put it together the same way I do my larger pieces. So I have to kind of redesign how the patterns are going to work to simplify them so that there's a lot less sewing and stuff involved. Now our hummingbird is going to have a clay head and some clay feet, but before we start on that I need to make the beak. And the beak, since it's so long and thin, I thought it'd be best to make out of instamorph instead of clay, that way it's not so fragile and we don't have to worry about it breaking. Now like everything else on our hummingbird, our beak is going to be very small, so we only need a very tiny amount of instamorph for this. So I'm just going to take a small pinch of our instamorph, I'm going to put it in some hot water, let it melt a little bit, and then we can take it out and mess around with molding it. So making the beak is going to be very easy. I'm just going to kind of roll it between my palms and against the counter until I have a long slender piece. And then I'm going to use my tools to kind of separate it to make it look like it has a top and a bottom beak. One thing that's really nice about Instamorph is you can constantly remelt it. So as you're working, of course, it's going to kind of harden. So you can just put it back in the hot water whenever you need it to be softer again. Okay, so I'm really happy with our little beak. Now we can move on to our clay pieces. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to be making out of clay is going to be the head. I've got a really tiny piece of bent wire, which we're going to use kind of like the little spine of the bird. And we're going to build our clay head off of this. After we bake it, we can add our legs to it too. So this is kind of like a simplified version of a wire frame. So I'm going to start off with a small ball of clay, and I'm going to put this at the end of our wire and just kind of shape it onto the wire to make sure it's nice and firm. Once we have our clay ball in place, I'm then going to take some glass beads. I have some very simple black ones, and I'm just going to push them onto the sides of the ball. These are going to be the hummingbird's eyes. You don't have to do much, you just need to make sure that you've got them pushed in nicely so they don't pop out later. After we have the glass eyes in place and they're nice and even, now we're going to take our beak that we made earlier, and we're going to push it right into the front of the ball of clay. Now because Instamorph melts at a very low temp, it can't go in the oven with the clay, so we're going to just pull it right out after we push it in. All we need to do is make an indention so we can glue it into place later. So again, make sure that you do not leave your beak in place. We're going to pull that off and set it off to the side for later. Okay, so we're basically done with the head right now, so we need to bake our clay. So we're going to put this in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit, and since it's really tiny, we're just going to put it in for about 35 minutes. And while we have our clay head baking, we're going to start on the feet. So what we're going to do first is we're going to make all the toes for the feet. So we need four for each foot, so we're making a total of eight toes. So for our toes, I've cut a bunch of tiny pieces of wire. They're all measured roughly about the same size. I believe the gauge of the wire is a 20 gauge, and we're going to start building our clay on top of this. That way we can make our toes. So I'm going to take a small amount of clay. I'm going to roll it out a little bit, and then I'm going to push my wire into the clay. I'm then going to use my fingers and my tools to refine the shape of the toe. So a lot of this is just very simple, we're just kind of making it look like it has a bit of a bend and then we have to define where the nail is. So after we get all eight of our toes sculpted, we're going to put these in the oven. Our head should be done so we can put these in the oven and we're going to put them in at 275 Fahrenheit for just about 20 minutes. And then once those are out of the oven and have cooled to touch, we can start building our feet on the wireframe. So for this, I added a little bit of wiring to the frame that we had already, and we're going to add a little bit of clay to the end of each wire, and this is where we're going to stick the toes. So we have a tiny bit of clay at the end of the wire, and we're just going to push all of our toes into place, and then start sculpting and blending the clay together until we have our foot. So again, we're just going to take our little toes that we already made, and we're going to push them into the clay and blend everything together. Then
Then we can put our whole body in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for probably about 35 more minutes. Okay, so all of our clay pieces are done, they've cooled, and we're going to take our beak and glue it into place on the face. So I'm going to take a little bit of E6000 glue and I'm going to dot it into the hole that we have for the beak, and then we can push our beak in place and let that dry. Once that's done drying, the only painting that we really need to do is painting the beak black and the feet black. So there's not a lot of painting at all. We can add a little bit of a white highlight to the toes here and there, but you don't have to do much. So again, I'm just going to go over the beak and the feet with some black paint. I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to mix up a tiny amount of resin and paint over this to help protect the paint. That way we don't have to worry about chips or anything like that. So the type of resin that I normally use usually takes about 24 to 48 hours to cure. So I'm going to let this sit overnight, but while that's curing, I'm going to start working on the feathers and sewing for the body. Okay, so I'm going to have the wings and the tail feathers made out of felt. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting the felt to make it look a little bit more realistic because we don't want a flat color. It'll look too plain. We want to have a bit more dimension to it. So I'm going to dampen my felt and I'm going to start using some different browns and whites and stuff like that and just kind of mess around until I get a nice natural color. Once I like how everything looks, I'm going to have to let this dry, but once it's done, we can start putting our wings together. So right here, I have all the fabric pieces for our body. We're going to have pieces of fabric that are going to go over the wings and the tail feathers, but right here in the middle is the pieces for the body itself. So we have a left and a right body piece, and these are going to be kind of a green color, and then the belly is going to be a white, and what we're going to do is we're going to take the belly piece and we're going to sew the side pieces to the sides of the belly. Anyways, our feather pieces are all nice and dry from painting, so we can start putting our wings and our tail feathers together. So I'm going to take the felt pieces first, and we're going to glue those together, and then I'm going to take the fabric pieces for the wings and for the tail feathers, and we're going to glue those layers on as well. We're going to have to let all of this dry. Afterwards, we can trim up the fur fabric a little bit, and then we can start putting this together on the wireframe. So right now our clay pieces are nice and cured and we can start putting everything together. So the first thing that I needed to do was add a little bit more wire to the wire frame. I need wires for the wings, so I just wrapped a little bit of 20 gauge onto the wire frame and we're going to glue our wings onto this. So we're just going to glue our wings right in place, let that dry, then we're going to take our fabric body and we're going to glue the neck piece all the way around the base of the head and then we're going to do the same thing to where the feet are, we're going to glue the fabric for the feet around the base of the feet. I'm also gluing the fabric around the base of the wings as well, and then we're also gluing the tail feathers to the very end of the back. We're going to let all of this dry, then we can add a little bit of stuffing inside of the body and then close up the back of the bird. Okay, so our hummingbird is all put together. He's a little too fluffy, so I'm going to take my scissors and start trimming the fur fabric. Honestly, I probably need to pick up some smaller scissors for this so it works a little bit better, but I'm a little lazy and I didn't want to go to the store, so I'm just going to use my giant scissors for this. Okay, so he's all trimmed up. Now what I want to do for the face is the species that I'm going for has these kind of pinkish red feathers that are very shimmery around its throat. So I'm going to be using some sequins and I'm just going to be layering them and gluing them into place under the face. So I'm just going to glue these into place, I'm going to let them dry, and then the last thing we need to do is add some fur fabric to the rest of the face because we have a bunch of clay exposed. So I'm just going to take some fabric glue and I'm going to paint it onto the surface where I want the fur to stick. And then I'm going to take some fur trimmings and just dust it over the face and use some tools to move it around until it's in the position that I want. Then we just need to let this dry. And then the last thing that we need to do for our hummingbird is we need to kind of adjust the colors of the fur fabric because he's a little too neon and he doesn't look realistic. Honestly, he's cute, but he needs a bit more of a toned down effect. So we're going to take some browns and blacks and grays and just a bunch of more natural colors and just slowly add it to the fur fabric to make it look a bit more natural. 
And yes, I am using a toothbrush. This actually works really well for painting fur fabric because the bristles are really tiny and it helps disperse the paint so it doesn't clump up. Okay, so I'm really happy with our little hummingbird. Obviously he's done. The only problem is he's such a small piece and I do want to sell him. It just doesn't feel like enough to sell him and he's very tiny and fragile. So I'm going to be making a base for him. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a wooden base and I'm going to drill some holes into it and we're going to take some wires and we're going to make a tiny little tree. Basically I'm just going to twist all the wires and we're going to form a tree and the very top branch is going to be kind of curved so we can have a spot for it to hang. So I'm gonna mess around where all the wires go, make sure I kinda like the shape of the branches, and then we're gonna start covering this in clay. So I'm gonna get this completely covered in clay, blend everything together, and then I'm gonna take a little bit more clay and make some roots on the base so it looks a little bit more realistic. So I'm just gonna kind of blend it in and shape some roots to make it look like a tree. Afterwards, I'm just going to add some texture to it and then we can put this in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for probably about 45 minutes. Now because this does have a wood base, I do recommend paying attention to it and being close by the oven so you can keep checking on it, but I've never had a problem with wood going through the oven at 275. It's a very low temp for wood. The worst is if it's in there too long, if it's a type of wood that has a lot of sap, some of that might leak through and you might have to clean the wood afterwards. So again, if you're going to put wood in your oven, just stay around it to make sure nothing happens to it. But so far, I've never had any issues with it with the temperature that I use to bake the clay. And then once our base is out of the oven and it's cooled to touch, we can start painting it. Now originally, I kind of wanted to add wood stain to the base of it and then have the tree painted, but it kind of felt weird having natural wood grain next to like a fake wood grain. So I ended up just painting the bottom a nice brown color, and then I did the tree a kind of lighter color with a lot of white highlights and stuff like that just to make it look lighter and stand out a bit. So after I got the tree and the base all painted, I let everything dry, I mixed up a bunch of resin, and then I painted it over everything. And of course, just like the hummingbird, when we resin that, we have to let this sit overnight and cure. But afterwards, now you're probably wondering why I have an extra hole in the base of the wood. We ended up drilling three, two for the tree, and then one extra one. Well, that's because I wanna add some flowers to it, and I wanted a spot to glue them into place. So I just had these fake flowers that I purchased online, I wrapped them all together into a tiny little bundle and then I just put a little bit of glue on the wires for them and I pushed them into place. And then the last thing that I did to our base was I glued a little bit of felt to the bottom of it just to give it a bit more of a finished feel and then you don't have to worry about this scratching surfaces or anything like that. So I glued that onto a piece of felt, let that dry, cut off the extra felt, and then the last thing that we need to do is we need to add a little bit of fishing line to the back of the hummingbird. That way we can hang him from the tree so it looks like he's flying. So I cut a tiny piece of fishing line, I tied a knot and made a loop, and then the little knot on the loop I glued into the back of the hummingbird, just glued it into place, made sure all the fur fabric covered the knot, let that dry, and then I could hang him on the tree. Okay guys, and that's how I made a life-sized hummingbird. I had so much fun with this project. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I know it was kind of a small project, but next week we have a large project I'm working on. I kind of needed the extra time, and that's kind of why I decided to do a miniature this week. So next week we're going to be doing a really cool dragon. I can't wait for you guys to see it, so keep an eye out for that video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!